Hello, welcome to Data Forge. I am Zoc. Thank you all for joining. We're going to have another interesting stream today. Lots of interesting news to go over and lots of high SAS decks that have hit the secondary market and some that have been sold from that we looked at last week. So that'll be interesting to take a look at. Um, let's see, what else do we got going on? Of course, as always, we're going to take a look at one of my favorite decks, a deck from Bygone's Past, and of course, check out the TCO Meta Watch. So lots of fun stuff today. Um, yeah, I think, I think things are going to ramp up who's opening all these decks yeah i'm not sure when they've opened them that's one thing we can check is the date the open date are they something that they've been open for a while or are they selling stuff that they've had for a while so um yeah we'll take a look let's 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 see let's check out the agenda Episode 11. First, we're going to heed the call. Check out the latest news. TCO MetaWash. Fresh marks with the latest high SaaS sales deck. High SaaS sales. Check out a cool deck. And then crack a pack. Maybe we'll get our own plus, plus 85 SaaS deck. We'll see. I doubt it. Okay. So first up, some really sad news, actually. Sad for the Keyforge community. Call of Discovery is ending. They have been just a cornerstone of the Keyforge content creators for three years. They have done so much, over 100 episodes. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about my favorite episodes. Um, and so really this is a tribute to Call of Discovery. It's not the best stream in the world, but it is a tribute. Okay, so my one of my favorite episodes was the interview with the... FFG art director Steve Hamilton and talking about the art of Keyforge and he is better known as the artist on a lot of our favorite Keyforge cards balance sheet and before he was FFG art director he was just an artist making cards for Keyforge and 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 other properties but um I thought this interview was awesome and Steve really went into a lot of cool details um, behind the scenes. They, he even gives the example that um, the FFG team gave him with the art um, direction on the, the card portal. And so the episode is really worth checking out. Lots of great insight. Lots of of cool stuff that they cover. Um, definitely one of my favorite episodes. And of course, they had lots of good interviews with all sorts of people, lots of developers, um, people that used to work at FFG when the ransomware attack happened. But of course, one of the key ones was with Richard Garfield himself, um, giving his insight into what he thought about Keyforge and and just the craziness that he wanted from it the unbalanced insanity and so it, it's it's a fun listen um obviously he's a prolific and amazingly creative designer and so it's really interesting to hear what he thought about keyforge and and kind of with how it's developed over time and then finally, I thought it was really cool. The Evolving CD-ROM episode was all about NARP. 
NARPing your deck. They have a whole page on the Call of the Discovery website about the NARP system, which is playing your deck a hundred times and learning about the deck. Um, and yeah, it's it, it it's a really cool theme. And like as we kind of grew with Call of Discovery, we we also I feel like we saw um. We saw Zach grow as a player, and now he's winning, he's winning tournaments and stuff. So it's pretty cool seeing the insight um, that they have to bring. And so, yeah, I, I definitely wanted to say thank you to Call of Discovery. We talked about the amazing interviews. The They had quiz showdown episodes with Health from Future Self that were tons of fun. Those are really cool. Uh, they had their 100th episode was a musical. That was fun. Uh, for every guest that they had on, they also asked them to take them through their favorite deck. So that was pretty cool too. Just seeing a deck and how it was discovered by their owner and what they thought about it and why they they love this unique piece of Keyforge that they have. Um and then one thing I really loved from the Call of Discovery was that they really had a different perspective with how they were approaching the Keyforge world. And that's that's one thing that I love with Keyforge too, is there's so many ways to have fun with Keyforge. And you know, Call of Discovery was all about the discovery. Uh there's competitive ones. Archon's Corner is kind of focused on OP and competitive play. Help from Future Self conversational podcasts. There's a lot of different aspects of what makes Keyforge cool and a lot of a lot of th different things to dig into and have fun with and I like to support all of it um as much I can even though I might not as get as much as enjoyment out of some aspects of it as others, but that's just that's fine with me. There's lots lots of people out there and the online communities have shown there's kind of something for everyone um in in their corner of the, the their Discord or or the internet. So we're gonna miss you Ed and Zach. Um but I'm sure sure we'll see you around so thank you to call discovery all right next up we have some news from ghost galaxy uh farewell we had an article just dropped today and it's all about the master vault they laid out that they are going to transition the Master Vault from Asmodee, Asmodee to Ghost Galaxy in a week, January 25th. So it will be down for several hours next week. And they go through kind of the changes that will be happening. There will no longer be an app on iPhone or Android, uh, but you can use the mobile website to register your deck. You will need a new password uh, because they're transitioning from the Asmodee account to a Ghost Galaxy account. Um, so you need to use the same email address to make sure that all the information transfers over, all the decks. Um, they're going to take out OP power levels and, and stuff like that information out of it. That will be stored separately. We're hoping for an announcement on OP that's coming um, maybe later this week. We'll see, uh, but hopefully soon. And that we'll not be able to um, scan Winds of Exchange yet, decks yet, so we'll have to wait a little bit longer for that. Um, and they're changing around the home page a little bit, changing around some of the pages, um, some of the things that you can filter on. They're getting rid of the 
keys that the Amber Shards would make and just listing the Amber Shards. They say they, they do have plans for Amber Shards sometime in 2023. So that's interesting. And um, also they're, they're saying that the cr currently open Master Vault API will be changing to something that now requires um, specific access. You have to fill out a web form if you need to continue using the Master Vault API. Um, so you will need to get an API key. Um, so they have a web form to fill out information related to why, why you need to use API. Um, and um, so they say this is a first step in the process. And they plan out to roll out new features in the future. And it, they say it'll be easier to roll those out if it's only based on the web as well, without having to worry about the apps. So that's good. Um, and they also, in their web form, they actually ask for feedback for features that people are looking for. So I thought it'd be interesting actually to talk about that uh, because I had some ideas uh, for some features and a lot of these have already been talked about but tracking legacies um, tracking enhanced cards right now of course the card they know that the card is enhanced but they don't know what enhancements are on it um, tracking deck language that's another gap is they don't know what language a deck is in um, special decks such as leaderboard decks or gamma decks it would be interesting to track that uh, but i'm curious if if you all have some ideas too send them the ghost galaxy um, i think they're very open to feedback and improving things where they can. So I'm very curious. Hopefully OP will be coming. Um, since Winds of Exchange isn't going to be happening until May or June, you know, what can they do for OP in the meantime? Maybe it can be at the club level like they talked about, the club and uh, kind of organization level. Um, and so there might be cool stuff that they can do there. And if, if they do have that, like what cool stuff can they track from OP in the website as well? Dinobot says, I want the card previews to not block the mouse events like on DOK. Ah, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, I would send in that feedback. That'd be good. So, yeah, I mean, the... So there is going to be a disruption in the Master Vault, and they are changing some things, but this is definitely the opportunity now to have your voice heard about what you want to see in there. Oh, hey, Wookie, thanks for the follow. It's actually just more convenient to scan decks and DOK. Yeah, well, give give that feedback to, uh, to Ghost Galaxy. Send it in, because... Um, if we keep giving it enough feedback, I think they'll change it. So, yeah, that's exciting. Um, they have the the form for if you need an API and they're asking for feedback in that, but they also have the form just on q4j.com for any feedback that you have. So, yeah, send in your feature request for the Master Vault. What do we want changed? What do you want changed? That's what I'm asking. Um... Obviously, you can track 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 stuff better for the Master Vault, but who knows what you can do? Um, and who knows what tie-ins there may be for OP as well? That's that'll be interesting. You know, I yeah, OP and prizes, and I mean, they're depending what they could do. There could be a lot of different stuff that they add. 
and maybe it's you know not part of the master vault maybe it's separate op or whatever but yeah i don't think i actually use the master vault in years all i really use is dok well there you go you don't necessarily need it yeah But they did say they have a plan for Amber Shards in 2023, so that's how you get your Amber Shards. I mean, honestly, they, I can't expect that they're going to do much with those because these were all something that Asmodee and FFG had. And yeah, you could buy stuff at Vault Tours, but um, it would be more or less giving away a bunch of free stuff if Ghost Galaxy was to do the same kind of uh, stores where you can buy stuff with Amber Shards. Um, so, yeah, I'm curious to see what they have planned for that. Um, it, you know, they definitely need some sort of way to buy cool stuff like at Volters, like, um, like they had in the past. But gonna get a play mat yeah i can see that the amber shard <laughs> the historical amber shard collector play mats yeah all right so that's the news hopefully there's more news about op coming up we'll see uh next up tco meta watch let's check it out let's see where we're at um so far and we'll take a quick peek right now as well let's uh let's check the summary um earlier today i checked a few times yeah hashtag no more play mats as a wiki uh you can you know use it for wallpaper like z right um and mass mutations was really at five out of the six Dex playing at seven were mass mutations, but earlier it was all worlds collide this morning. So um, definitely will be interesting to uh, again track this over time, especially once Woe comes out. Uh, but let's let's go check right now actually, and see if we can. Okay, there's six competitive matches. Some are. Password protected, but we'll take a quick look see. We got Clog in, we got Killer Queen, and Moibian. And we'll check out their decks. And we have a bunch of lock games. Okay. So we only got four decks we can peep right now. Okay, let's uh let me Pull it up in DOK. I need to fix my conversion. Most of those are sealed. Yeah, yeah. It is a good point. On Arkans Corner, they do have uh, weekly events, Wednesday nights. You can play Keyforge or listen to me. <laughs> um, check out the Arkans Corner Discord for that. So a lot of those locked ones definitely were that event okay and okay so we're starting out with mass mutations 79 sass log the deck we'll do something with that later put this over here oops Okay, we have a 92 SAS mass mutation deck. So the whole point of the TCO Meta Watch is to track over time the meta that we see on TCO Competitive Q. Um, I'm not, yeah, you know, I only started this a few weeks ago, so I'm not expecting any amazing insights at this point. But tracking it over the long term, it may it may be interesting, especially as there's new sets released. We have a 69 SAS AOA deck. That's pretty cool. Interesting. 
And finally, we have a 74 SAS mass mutation. So a lot more mass mutation again tonight. And as we saw, uh, as we've seen over time, it, it it's definitely has been um, the majority of the meta on the competitive queue. Um, so once we get a little bit more data, I'll try and make these charts a little bit prettier and and we'll check that out. But so far, mass mutation still kind of leading the way in terms of the competitive queue. Um, and we still see the majority of SAS ranges between like 75 to 84. Um, that's kind of the top of the bell curve there. Um, so, so that is your TCO MetaWatch. Next up, we have, of course, Fresh marks. We're going to check out the latest sales from high SAS decks. And actually, I added a few in there that weren't over 85 SAS, but they're, they got some cool stuff. So let's take a quick peep of those. And plus, we actually also have updates from some of the sales from previous weeks. Um, we're not going to go through all those, but I, check, I checked them out. We saw um a week ago that this 96 sas worlds collide deck went on sale there was a 300 euro offer that was rejected but it now appears to be sold it's got a new owner uh, unfortunately then don't know what the uh sale price was but definitely have to expect it was over a 300 euro um also the one that was listed for 20 bucks the Coda 89 SAS, it was also sold. And then one actually went, it's listed under the same seller, but it's no longer for sale. Um, so not sure what happened with that one. Um, but that was the updates from the ones from last week. Now this week we got a whole bunch. We got 19 decks. Um, now three of them aren't, actually a, a little bit more than three. Five of them aren't 85 SAS or more, but those are also interesting for another reason so since there's so many we'll have to go through these pretty quick so here's the first one it's being sold by Restring guntus 86 sas aoa deck this logos untamed uh it's got exhum double hysteria in the logos it's got brig double cutthroat research eureka neutron shark lab work and then it's got a heart of the forest in untamed but no key cheats to kind of support that heart of the forest um and double full moon with um one alpha creature and just two other creatures so those full moons are not going to be getting much work done but so that is uh no no price listed just for uh offer next up i've added a couple ones that came up that were not 85 sas but interesting for other reasons the next two were genka decks so this deck being sold by Arent Long, Arente Long, uh, out of Italy, is a Martian Generosity double key objection deck with Mars First and Glixel Proliferator. So pretty nice Mars lineup to get out of the Genka. And the Logos, also some speed to help with double Titan Librarian, Helperbot, Igor, Wild Wormhole, Sloppy Lab Work, and a Binite Rupture can also help jack up your uh, ember to get off those key abductions uh the martian generosity as well and the shadows actually supports it somewhat well as well with a treasure map um a bren the fanatic with a life for life uh nurse blast dust chronicles so a pretty nice looking genka it is listed for 750 euros so if you need a good genka well, test it out, see how good it is, but that's a steep price. Next deck is also a Genka. So it's also 78 SAS, also sold by Arenta Long. Um, the logos might be a little bit better um, with a double lab work. The ZYX Researcher also has a binate rupture to help set it up. The Mars is not quite as good. Um, it's got the one generosity, one key abduction, and it has a proliferator, but no Mars first. Um, 
However, the untamed is a little bit better. Um, a little, a few more creatures to go with the double full moons. It does have a Nepenthe seed and a key charge, um, which you know you could do Martian generosity key abduction. Next turn, maybe double key charge or use the Nepenthe seed to do a double key abduction. Um, but this also has zero amber control. Um, and that right now is just no price listed on this one. Uh, make an offer, it says. Okay. Next up, back up to over 85 SAS, we have Donovan J. Acid Glare Sr., a Mass Mutations Dis Logos Untamed, being sold by this, this, no, no price listed. Um, the Dis has a few sins, Desire, Envy, Greed. It's got a Lord Invidious. A Stirring Grave, Obsidian Forge, Shadow of Dis. Uh, the Logos is Double Eclectic Entry, Lethologica, Cronus, Novu Dynamo, Cumex, Double Dimension Door, and then the Untamed has a Double Gloriana's Attendant, Fandangle, Double Cephaloist, Song of the Wild, Wild Bounty. Um, so there you have it. Next up, we have R. Nowak, the Market Respex, with a Maverick, No Safety in Numbers, and Star Alliance. 88 SAS, Worlds Collide, being listed for $300 by Chimera. Um, Logo Saurian, Star Alliance, a really nice Star Alliance set, um, listing here with a Quixel Stone, Transporter Platform, a Tabor, Double Kirby, Double Ingram, Chan, and Garcia. The Saurian has double Oduak, double Legatus Raptor, Tribute Six Semper combo, um, Ancient Power, Tricerian Legionary. Yeah, Dinobot's all about that. And the Logos has double, double Wild Wormhole, Chaos Portal, Memory Chip, double Eddie. This one actually looks pretty dang good. Um, it does have only 10 printed ember and only 16 expected ember but you know it looks like it can go pretty good board in both star alliance and saurian has some neat tricks in it with tribute six semper has a lot of speed um both in logos and star alliance that deck looks pretty cool i like it and for 300 bucks could be yours all right Next up, we have Warlord Killer Queen Fairhand. Love the name. Also, Worlds Collide. Dis Logo Sarian. Also being sold by Chimera, this time for 250 bucks. And this one also has a lot of Saurian craziness with Double Tribute, City State Interest, Ancient Power, Crassosaurus, Library of Polyosaurus, Odoac, and Double Ludo, and a Scudum. So, no way to take all that Ember for yourself. But with the double Ludos and the Scudum, you could potentially erase a whole ton of Ember. The Logos is pretty nice with the interdimensional graph, the double Tau Taus, Memory Chip, Daughter, Wild Wormhole, Wormhole, and the Dis, not as exciting, Triple Imp Spectre, Infernus, Exhum, Double Glee, Full Mayhem. Yeah, that Ember control is nuts. Yeah, 19A on this one. Um, I mean, it looks actually fairly well-rounded. Um, and it could be yours for $250. Okay, next up. Uh, is most of that in the Saurian? I guess it's got the Graft and Logos. And the Saurian could help set that up. And it's got the one in Furnace and Dis and the two Malison and Dis. Um, and I guess that's it. Yep. All right, next up is Elder Bellatrix Mine Watcher, being sold also by Chimera for $300. And this one is a Mass Mutations Dislogosaurian Triple Infernus, Obsidian Forge, Screaming Cave, Markadis, and a Grim Reminder. Let's, let's check out this dis this lineup with a grim reminder. You have Anguish, Bonesaw, Brabble, Impspector, Triple Infernus, and Picaroon. 
That's a pretty good lineup. Uh, the Logos is is at least half spicy. Double Lethologica, Sloppy Labwork. Let's get Sloppy. Auto Encoder, Daughter, Novo Dynamo, Cumex, and Torado. And Zorian also has some nice tricks because it's got Amphora Captura and Exile. Um, with, also with Spoils of Battle, Citizen Tricks, Faust the Great, Defense Initiative, Curse of Vanity. Uh, so with M4 Captura, capture all their em Ember, exile it. Um, so yeah, that's got some plays as well. But only 3.4 creature control. Not not looking good there. Um, but that can be yours for $300. All right. Next up from Chimera for a, a cool $150. A Worlds Collide, 85 Sass, Double Fangtooth Cavern, Ghost Hawk, Imprinted Murmurk, Murmook, Double Unnatural Selection, Punctuated Equilibrium with Nature's Call, Regrowth, Grasping Vines, Logo says Triple Titan Guardian, an Eddy, a Chaos Portal, Positron Bolt, and Triple Information Exchange. And then the Dis has an EE -E on the fringes, a Library of the Damned, an Exhume, a Draining Touch, a Nefru, and a Rock Grub. Uh, this one's pretty interesting. There's lots lots of killing going on in this deck. Um, yeah. You definitely want to set up a nice EE -E play, but it doesn't have a lot of ways to to do that? Uh, no. That's that's an interesting one. It'd be interesting to see how it plays. 85 sass, 150 dollars, world collide. Sold by Chimera. Okay. Next up, we have a coda 86 sass that 86 sass deck. We have EA Quinn program programmatrice del drama. Dinobot says it would be fun to draw six cards from Guardians when you unnatural selection. That would be a cool play. That would be a cool play. Just do it before you do, or sorry, after you do the uh, punctuated equilibrium. Yeah, yeah, check out this logo. Triple phase shift, double neutron shark, scrambler storm, wild wormhole. What a logos. The Shadows has Triple Shadow Self. Old Bruno, Mac the Knife, Urchin, Double Dodger, Double Seeker Needle, Hidden Stash, Booby Trap, and the Untamed. Definitely we're hoping for a little bit more juice here, but it does have Hunting Witch, Dust Pixie, Nepenthe Seed, uh, Double Nocturnal Maneuver, Key Charge, Lost in the Woods. Um, so yeah, that Looks like a fun deck. This is being sold by Skinich and doesn't have a price. Uh, looks like maybe being sold out of France, it looks like. All right. Uh, but that could definitely be like a good Logos pod or, yeah, I don't know. Next up, we have a 67 SAS deck. Because it's a Genka. Yes, including some more Genkas. This is also from a Rentelong. Double Martian Generosity Key Abduction. Um, 13 Ember peps, Pips to help support this one. No Proliferator. Um, it's got an Exhume Double Hysteria, Double Dust Imp. And this one also has a Heart of the Forest. So this one, Heart of the Forest. And then you get ready to get your key abductions off. Um, however, I don't think you have a way to bring it back. So I guess you uh, you just gain enough key normally the first time, but then you have enough have to have enough ember to get off your Martian generosity and then a key abduction. I don't know. It'd be interesting to see how well that works. It is being sold for 500 euros. If that interests you. And then we have another Genka. Oh, sorry. This was the same one. 
that we looked at before. It was first listed without a price and then it uh, was changed to 750 euro. So we already looked at one from before. That was the other Genka. And then I wanted to look at this one because it's got a crazy listing price. This is Zarina Woodville, an 81 SAS mass mutation deck being sold by Ivan Rubio. This logo shadows. It's got a double Ultra Graviton with Lethologica and Autoencoder and Daughter. So lots of speed coming out of that logos. And the disc has got double mark of disc. Shadow Abyss, Infernus, Lord Invidious. And in the shadows, we have Red Penny, Seeker Needle, Gambling Den, Double Look over there, a Barrow, a Mug, a Ransack, a Vandalize, a Booby Trap. So, um, looks like a good deck. Uh, but the asking price is 3,000 euros. Whoa. Wow. That's that seems like a lot. Seems like a lot. Yeah, so I thought that was interesting. It'd be fun to watch, see if like it gets any offers. Um All right. <laughs> Next up we have a eighty six SAS mass mutation singer Pereira Pereira uh by Shaka. Sold by Shaka. I think it's a lot, yeah. Uh, this has a Speedy Logos, Eclectic Inquiry, Triple Lethologica, Sloppy Labwork, Autoencoder, Daughter, Qmax. In the shadows, we have a Gambling Den, Seeker Needle, Red Penny. Uh, and in the Star Alliance, we have um, an Anthony, a Subject Kirby, Stunner, Universal Translator, Mutagenesis Researcher. So lots of speed in this one. Um, no price listed, but you can make an offer. And that is Singer Pereira. Next up, an 88 SAS Worlds Collide deck being sold by Dilly73. Logo Saurian Star Alliance. A uh, really nice Star Alliance here with Triple Medic Ingram, a Kirkar, a Kirby, a Morpheus, a Kirby's Blaster. In the Saurian, we have some some nice fancy tricks here. We have a tribute with Six Semper, or we have the tribute with the Imperial Forge, and then an Exile, or a Six Semper, a Golden Spiral, or Orator Hisaro to pump up some of those Ember Pips even more, a uh, Senator Strix, if you can get the tribute on that, and then Imperial Forge, that'd be pretty good. And an Imperial Scutum to protect all that Ember. And you would have liked a little bit more archiving in this Logos to kind of try and set up that play. It does have a Dr. Millie and an Eddie. Um, but no other archiving. Uh, it's got a Cutthroat Research, Information Exchange, Hapsis, Neutron Shark, Titan Guardian. I guess Wormhole Technician counts as some uh, archiving. All right, so 88 SAS, no price listed. We have a, a bunch of these from Dilly coming up. None of them have a price listed, um, but you can make an offer. Next one up from Dilly73 is R. Ott, Magistrate of the Antique Square, an 88 SAS Worlds Collide deck, logo Sorry and Star Alliance. A Imperial Scutum Maverick in Star Alliance. Also featuring Book of LEQ, Captain Valjerico, Double Com Officer Kirby, Double First Officer Frame, Double Science Officer Kincan, and a Kirkar to protect some of that. In Saurian, we have a again the Tribute Six Semper, but this time with three Golden Spirals and a Spartasaur. Tricerian Legionary. Now we're talking Dinobots number, Spartasaur in the house with the Imperium. Um, and then in Logos, we have Cutthroat Research, Information Exchange, Twin Bolt, Wild Wormhole, Eddie, Jar Goggle, Discombobulator. Uh, only 
creature control on this one, which could be a problem. Spartasaur can definitely help, but um, you got to get there. You got to get to it. And you got to make it survive. All right. Next up, also by Dilly73, 86 SAS Mass Mutation. This is Quick Blit, the producer of Goblins. Again, Logosaurian Star Alliance. This Star Alliance has a nice trick with Transporter Platform and Double Anthony. Just keep playing Anthony, bouncing the other one. Uh, we have a Subject Kirby, Blast Shielding, Disruption Field, Tachyon Pulse for some Artifact Control. The Saurian has a bunch of doubles, double Axiom of Grisk, double Spoils of Battle, double Curiosaurus. We also have a Citizen Trix, a Fausta Grade, a Perfectus Ludo. And the Logos has double Lethologica, Sloppy Lab Work, Skippy, Time Hog. Let's get Skippy. And Discombobulator. All right. Looks uh, somewhat well-rounded. Quick Blitz, producing some goblins. Alrighty, next up is also by Dilly, the Carpenter that hides smog. And I actually have this listed as a winner's deck. I forget why. Maybe this was in the Shadow Worlds. That might have been why. Or it was in some old... AOA tournament? I don't know. But this is the 85 SAS AOA deck. Logo Sanctum of Shadows. Got your good old Time Traveler, Triple Helper Bot, Neutron Shark, Jar Goggle, Interdimensional Graft, Archimedes, ZYX Researcher, Master of the Theory, and Sizable Entangler. That is a Logos. The Sanctum has Blinding Light, Doorstep to Heaven. Shield of Justice, Take Hostages, Hollowed Shield, uh, Double Rothface, The Fierce, The Great Rider, and a Vault Keeper. And the Shadows coming in with some Ember Control with the Double Brawnies, the Umbra, the Yancey Gang, the Little Nif, the Guard Disguise, and a Swindle, and a Nerve Blast, and a Life for Life. So it looks like a fun deck. Uh, creature Control is a little bit concerning, but... That logo still looks fun. And lots of nice scaling amber control. Yeah, that one looks fun. Okay, two decks to go. We have Sabo H. Katerg, the seventh. Also by sold by Dilly 73. Back to Worlds Collide with 85 SAS Saurian Shadows Star Alliance. Um here we have the Golden Spiral Citizens, or sorry, the Golden Spiral Cincinnatus Rex combo with Double Shrix, Triceran Legionary, Imperial Scutum, Phalanx Strike, Imperial Forge, Double Exile. In Shadows, we have a Too Much to Protect with a Ronnie, a Quiet Anvil, a Double Mug, a Hawk, a Hit and Run to go with that Ronnie. And in the Star Alliance, we have a Helmsman Spears, a First Officer Frame. Uh, we got a lot of nice pips on upgrades, so the two cloaking dongles and the Light of the Archons to go with a Transporter Platform. And then we have an Encounter Suit, which could be fun with Helmsman Spears or Cincinnatus Rex. All right. And then last 85 plus SAS deck that was went on sale this week. M Shiver, Glenpont Sulfurous Governor. Uh Dissorian Star Alliance, Mass Mutation 85 SAS. Also a Sins deck, we have Greed, Sloth, and Wrath. Uh, Anguish, Implosion, a Markadis, a Grim Reminder, and a Gleeful Mayhem. In Saurian, we have Desilus, uh, uh, Double Defense Initiative, Citizen Tricks, Ludo, 
and in Star Alliance. Actually, it's got um, Beware the Eyes as well. So if you can properly lay out your creatures and get Dacilus out, capture all their ember, put out the Ludo, and then Beware the Eyes of Dacilus, make all that ember go away. Sins and a Gigantic. That is something for sure. Star Alliance is a little bit lackluster. Um, Subject Kirby. Now it does have five upgrades that have pips on them with a Blast Shielding, a Disruption Field, the Triple Observe you Max. So if you can get those on the away team and when it dies, they go to all to archives and get those pips again. It's a super slow transporter platform. <laughs> uh, but yeah, definitely the Sins Gigantic is is the exciting part here oh yeah grim reminder is good with that too okay so that is a look at our sales for the week um it's definitely going to be fun looking at what sells over time um we saw that 96 s sold uh, what else will sell? What else will sell? Okay. And then next up we have my deck spotlight. And this time we did AOA to start with. Then we did Coda. Figured have to keep going to another set. So we're going the Worlds Collide. And this is Princess Hogstail Arkanovich. And this was actually my first sealed organized play experience got this deck at sealed went three and oh with it uh it's got some fun tricks in it it's it's not super crazy uh but dish shadows logos worlds collide let's let's take a look at it um it's got lots of little fun tricks that if you can get to get off it can do some oh i guess it went four and oh i didn't even know i forgot i forgot how much i played Okay, Let's zoom in a little bit there. So, only 68 sass. In the disc, we have a Hysteria, Misery Exploit, Poltergeist, Double Library of the Damned, Bornit, Dendrix, Harbinger of Doom, Rock Rub, Double Skullion, and a Snag. In the logos, we have a Zenzi Zenzi Zenzik, a Dr. Millie, a Eddie, Double Babbling Bibliophile, a Daughter, Double Thorium Plasmate, a Data Forge, and a Remote Access. That's right, Data Forge in the house. And in the shadows, we have a Ronnie that's supported by both a Hit and Run and a Kaimor Eclipse. We have a Bren the Fanatic, which can be killed with a Special Delivery or the Spike Trap. Uh, we also have an Umbra, a Hugger Mugger, a Obluette, uh, a Mug. A long fuse mines as a skeleton key. So this one likes to get out the library of the dams early if it can. Um, if you got those going, if you got the Zenzi 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 going, if they let the babbling bibliophiles survive a turn, you can definitely get off the data forge. Um, so yeah, let's see how it goes. And let's pull it up. Over here, um, let me kill those. Keyforge, all right. Uh, only casual going on right now. Okay, competitive, start out. Let's go princess, 67% win rate, probably not a lot of games on on DOK. Uh, so we're going to be trying to get off some of the tricks with the Bren the Fanatic. If we can get a big archive going, maybe get the Data Forge off. Uh, we'll see what we can do. We'll see what we can do. Whoa, what did I just do here? Crazy.
let's see, let's pull over this, take a look-see at it again. So we can see getting the Zenzi, Zenzi, Zenzi out early can be important too. It really helps um, because it definitely can be just kind of controlled easily if it doesn't get a little bit of card advantage. Um, Although it does have the nice Ronnie Bren plays, you know, getting a couple uses out of the Ronnie with a hit and run and the Kaimor Eclipse is kind of important. The Eddie, it pretty much just survives the turn, so there's not much you can do with it. There's no creature protection whatsoever. So that's one of the bad things is the Zenzi, the Babbling Bibliophiles, the Eddie, they all die super easy. What's up, Dinobot? All right. What do you got? What you got? What a what a guy. What a guy. All right. He who interrupts computers. Ha <laughs> ha. Love the name. Love the name. Let's see what he's running here. Logo Star Alliance Untamed also worlds collide. A double Kirby Morpheus. Code Monkey, I, Eddie, Igor, Double, oh, a Mimicry, Double Unsuspecting Prey, Double Quadrant Boil, that's a nice combo. Okay, um, this is not a great start, it doesn't really do anything, so we're going to mulligan that. We actually got a Library of the Damned on our redraw, so that's not bad. Um, do they have any way to bounce? They have a Red Alert, a Stealth Mode. Okay, haps us to start out with. We will go this Library of Damned and Dendrix and Insure. Let's see, do they have any artifact control? This deck actually has a lot of artifacts. Um, our deck, that is. Six artifacts, and they're all very helpful. Okay, go in the Logos and Igor. Eddie, what did they discard with their Igor? A Tad Tadlin and a Qua Cauldron Boil. Ooh, and Hapsus to take out the Dendrix. Okay. But we got something good here. We got our Zenzi Zenzi Zenzik. Now the question is, what do we not play? The Babbling Bibliophile? So we're definitely on Logos. Definitely putting out our Hapsis. We need a little bit of beef out there. I think we play our... Hmm. Do we hold the Eddie and play the Babbling Bibliophile? Or do we discard the Babbling Bibliophile and play the Eddie? Let's play the Babbling Bibliophile and hold the Eddie. And the Star Alliance to go with the Kirby co coming down. So they could have anything. Ooh, double special agent fingers and explorer rover. Okay. So do we need to go shadows here? I don't think so. I think we can go logos. We're going to, let's see, Thorium Plasma is probably going to kill a Fingers. But first, let's reap with Babbling Bibliophile. We did get a Dr. Millie. Oh, that's nice. So let's play out the Dr. Millie now so we can get our archiving going. We can archive three cards. That's perfect. Um... Then I think we Thorium Plasmate one of the fingers.
Uh, Hap says kills a Kirby. And Zenzi just reaps. Zenzi could kill Eddie or Igor or even Explorer Rover. But yeah, let's just reap and then let's play out the Sanitation Engineer and we'll hold the Eddie again. Why not? Okay, and we got our other Thorium Plasmate. So we have a nice big Logos board here that we can go into again if they don't totally destroy it. Okay, they're back into Logos. I'm guessing that babbling bibliophile is going going away. Yep, the Igor takes it out, as expected. Ooh, Code Monkey to take back the Star Alliance and gain two Ember. Quant comes down, and Eddie reaped Sanitation Engineer, and now they have six logos on the board. Okay. I think we go back into logos here. Okay. Perhaps this is going to kill the Quant. A Thorium Plasmate will kill the Wormhole Technician. Uh, I think we Reap, Reap, and Sanitation Engineer kills Eddie. And then we'll play out our Eddie to keep our Zenzi in the middle. Okay. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay, into Untamed they go. Now, they do have a lot of creature control in Untamed, if I recall. They also have the Mimicry. Let's see, they had the double Unsuspecting Prey with the double Cauldron Boil. I guess... Yeah, so there's one unsuspecting prey. And here's the Thorium Plasmate with the Mimicry to move, to kill Zenzi. Dang. Cauld cauldron Boil. Okay, but I do get my key. And now I think, I think I go into this here. I think I play the Harbinger. I blow it up with the Scullion to wipe their board. And then the Rock Robe, the Scullion to kill it, and then the Snag. Yeah, let's let's do it. Uh, Library of the Damned is going to archive this. We'll play out another Library of the Damned. We'll play out our Harbinger. We'll kill it with a Skullion. We'll play out a Rock Grub. We'll kill it with our other Skullion. We'll play out the Snag. And we'll play our Misery Exploit for nothing. Okay. They're going back into Star Alliance. Red Alert, 2 damage. Ooh, we have a nice potential play here. Ooh, the Morpheus comes down. What do they have with the Morpheus? They do have the Kirby with the Morpheus. Very nice. A regrowth off the Morpheus for the other Kirby. Oh man, they could play four cards off hand if they have them, but they don't. Because I know they have fingers still in their hand. And Explorer Rover. So they only have two other cards. Stealth Mode and Gravid Cycle. Wow, they bring them back. Stealth mode with Gravis Cycle? Yep. So I can't do my Hysteria. Ooh. That was a nice play. Man, it's tempting to get that Long Fuse Mines out, but... 
think we just go dis here. Library of the Damned on the Obliette. Yeah, we're actually going to be drawn into a Data Forge. If we take a Logo turn, we might be able to get the Data Forge off. Let's see, we have six in the Archive now. I don't think so. I don't think we're going to have enough Ember. But we will. Do we archive like a remote access? Yeah. Play out the Bornet. Um, Hysteria, we'll just discard, I think, because the only thing we have coming in this is Poltergeist. So, now we decide what we have to kill. And I think we got to kill two Kirby's. Let's see, what other play effects do they have that would matter? Eddie's gone, nothing in Untamed. So yeah, let's take out the Kirby's. And in turn. We didn't get our Data Forge, that's too bad. They're going to at least reap four times and have the stealth mode. And we didn't get our Ronnie, although we do have the Hugger Mugger. Will that be enough to stop him? Ooh, the Kirkar comes out. That is unfortunate. Oh, and they have a Light of the Archons. Cloaking Dongle and stealth mode? Dang. We will not be able to stop him. Now the question is, how much of these logo car, uh, di um, how much of these shadows cards do I actually hold on to? They can just reap out again. Oh man. Dang, we are so close, like, we could actually win Logos. Yeah, we can't go Logos. We have to go Shadows. We have to pull our Archives. Spike Trap, Skeleton Key, Long Fused Mines. We will play out the Brend here. And the Hugger Mugger. And the Umbra. And I think we're actually going to keep all of this stuff. Because we need, uh, let's see, that means we won't draw into our Ronnie. We didn't put our brand on the side. What were we thinking? But we can Kai more. Oh man. We can mug and hit and run. Oh man, we screwed up. We screwed up. Um We had to have Brand on the end for our uh, spike trap, but we can get it there with the Kaimar Eclipse, or we could kill it with a hit and run mug. We wanted to hit and run with the Ronnie, but so do we discard the Kaimor then? Well, we're not gonna we're not gonna draw anything, so let's keep it.
can only go untamed. Interesting. Okay. Okay, we gotta kill that Pumpaka Anga. But first, we're gonna use the Long Fuse Mines. Then, we're gonna fight here. Hugger Mugger is then gonna fight. Who are they going to fight? Now they're going to reap. Hmm. Hugger Mugger can fight the Anga. Yeah. And then we can spike trap. We'll only steal one there. We can mug our own Skolian, Kaimor Eclipse. Okay, we got the Ronnie, that was good. Ooh, information exchange for two. Twin bolt, twin bolt, quant. Okay. So we'll do our own logo section. Oh no. I don't want to put an ember on pocket universe. That's too bad. We did get back into an eddy, which is good. Okay, they redo the Starline stuff that we put back into their hand. question is, is if they're going to be able to get there. Oh, dang it. I got to put a Zenzi in the middle. And I can't play the remote access again because of Pocket Universe. Okay, here comes the Star Alliance. If they have... Kirby Twinbolt, ooh. They take out a daughter and a babbling bibliophile. Kirkar kills the Eddie. Reap, steal. Reap, if they have the stealth mode, they don't have the stealth mode. Okay, good. So we're going to go Shadows. We're going to Long Fuse Mine, Special Delivery, Ronnie, Brand, Hit and Run on the Fingers, bring back Ronnie, Steal again, and then Skeleton Key to Zenzi. And in turn. And we got Brand for a special delivery. Okay, here comes Star Alliance. Oh, they're just going to key charge, aren't they?
that's too bad. Uh, I think we could have stole three more this next turn with Brend. But actually, we didn't have a lot of great plays we could have done after that. All right. Well, that was fun, though. Um, good game, Danabot. That was fun. Cool little deck. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll jump in and try and get another. We'll see. It's, it appears to be a, a slow night on the Crucible. All right. We got one right away. Alex Shipalov. Let's do it. I'm guessing this is fire. Good looking. Have fun. Right. Mm, that is not the start we want. Let's see. They have he. Oh, this was your deck. They have Cecil Il Lontano, Modelo della Rebellione. Logo Saurian Untamed. A Niffle Kong. Quadruple Lethologica, Autoencoder Daughter, ooh, a Nifokong Ultra Gravitron deck. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, they take Ultra Graviton into their hand. Very nice. Yeah, we're just going to start out with a very unexciting Logos turn. Your computer has been interrupted. <laughs> okay. Double Dark Centurion. Um, oh, they had a damage pip? I didn't see that. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a shitty turn, but do we go dis? Do they have any artifacts we care about? Auto encoder. It's unlikely they're playing it next turn, though. Um, Go shadows. There's the Ultra Gravitron and a daughter. Lethologica to the diametric charge. Okay. This is going to get out of hand really quick. Ultra guy, special delivery, take out the daughter, rock rub, dendrix, scullion to kill the rock rub. I do really like this deck. It's kind of slow. It's even though it's got some speed, uh, it's very finicky, uh, but it's fun. Chana Hubris, moving the Ember from Dark Century and over to my Dendrix, who's probably gonna die. Citizen Strix, the Steel One, stomping my Dendrix and killing my Umbra. And a humble. Okay. I have no way to stop them. We'll get out this logo, so we'll go Zenzi. Uh, we'll put out the babbling bibliophile just so they have to kill it, even though they probably have a damage pip, and we'll discard the sanitation engineer so we get the Zenzi action. This would have been nice last turn if we had the Ronnie Kaimor Eclipse. But, alas, we didn't. Uh, we do have a Hysteria, which actually isn't that good with Ultra Gravitron. <laughs> um, too bad it wasn't warded. We might have to do it anyway. Because this board state is crazy. And then save the Harbinger Scullion. Um, let's see. If we go Logos here. Now let's go Logos. We'll reap here. We got nothing. We got nothing. Do we need to discard a, our daughter? 
Uh, the Fandangle's gonna die here. And... We will... Reap with a Zenzi Zenzi Zenzik. And... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We already have eight, so we can play the daughter. There goes my Zenzi. Ah, this time they did archive Ultra Gravitron. Hmm. So we could actually kill it if we wanted to this turn. And push everything back into their hand. Yeah, let's do it. We get rid of the key frog. Do we kill it with the scullion or just reap? I think we just reap here. And we do the hysteria. We do the harbinger. And we do the scullion. There's a lot, a lot of stuff just to get rid of that ultra gravitron. Uh oh. Oh man. Another resurgence. They brought back both parts of their ultra graviton. I didn't want to kill it. Yeah. Actually, yeah, it probably would have been better because they had already taken their archives. So, you're right. Uh, but we're going to go Shadows here, and we got to think about our ordering here. We're going to Obluyet a Fandangle. We're going to Mug a Key Frog, and then Kaimor Eclipse Sniffle Apes. We'll Ronium, and then we'll Kaimor Eclipse. Okay. Here comes the Ultra Graviton, and it's going to come out ready. Hey, they can purge their own stuff. I don't have anything for you to purge. If you do, purge a creature. Yeah. Oh, they didn't come out. Oh, yeah, they reaped. And they purge your Ultra Graviton. Okay, so they're check. Oh man, I could actually stop them with a Bren play. It's not a great play. This dis in my hand is not great. Um, I could also kill a Fandangle and put out a Daughter, which is not a bad play. So let's do that. Uh, yeah, we gotta get rid of these discs. Okay, pulling their archives, playing a whole bunch of Saurian cards. Ooh. They had one damage pip, and then they're able to load up the daughter with four amber pips. Youch. Youch. Okay, we'll get the dis out here while we have a chance. I guess we'll destroy the Bornet and in turn. Hugger Mugger will steal. There's the auto encoder. 
Well, we have an Eddie Dr. Millie play too. They have Lethologica, Lethologica, Lethologica. They keep discarding it's coming. They kill everybody. Okay, they're up to 10. I can archive three, I can archive four. I can have them pay 10 for that key. I can steal four, but I have to give them one and capture. Stealing's better, but it's not gonna do much. All right, man, good game. Yeah, definitely outclassing that one, um, but it was fun. Okay. I think I think that's good for Princess. We'll just give it to you. It's a pretty slow night on the Crucible, and I don't think it can hang as well in the competitive queue. Um, so, we do have some exciting stuff coming up. We've talked about this for a while. It is still going to happen sometime. Oh, wait. First, we need to crack a pack. Crack a pack. Okay, and we've done... We've done AOA and Worlds Collide. So, we have... Coda, Mass Mutation, and Dark Tidings left. We haven't done those sets yet. Who's got a preference? Anybody? Anybody? I forgot to get the knife again. While you guys are thinking about it, I'm going to get the knife. DT it is. All right. Yes! Yes! Let's open the best DT deck in the world! No pressure. Hey, no light. We gotta fix the lights. We're gonna open the best DT deck in the world. You heard it from Dinobot first. World exclusive. Best DT deck in the world. Crack in the pack. It's got a Maverick from this little corner. I see Maverick. A Maverick makes the best DT deck in the world. Okay, we have Logo, or we don't have Logos. <laughs> we have Star Alliance, Saurian, Unfathomable. Let's see what we got. And let's see what we get for a Maverick. And let's see how we open this. Okay. And we have, oh my goodness, this deck is something special. It is the reincarnation of Steve Jobs. What? We have Jobs, the alpha of respiration. Jobs is back. Let's see. Let's check out this Archon. It's a, it's a very pointy head. Um, it's pointy kind of all over. Interesting. Interesting. It's like a... Arrowhead. Arrowhead. All right. What do we got to start? To start with, we have Brachinalia. Play. Put four ember on Brachinalia from the common supply. A friendly key creature captures one ember. At the start of each player's turn, if that player controls four or more creatures with ember on them, move each ember from Brachinalia to that player's pool. All right, and then we have, ooh, Eclectic Ambrosius. At the end of your turn, put a Knowledge Counter on Eclectic Ambrosius. 
action, remove three knowledge counters. If you do, gain six ember. Playing the long game. We have, sorry about that, play, destroy a creature. Its controller gains one ember. Four coins should cover it, right? Okay, we have a uh, Sorarium. Each creature with the lowest power cannot reap. Exhibits of the Republic's eons long history make it abundantly clear how futile it is to try and change them. We've gained 11 ember. Yes, we have um, the 5 from Braconalia, the 6 from Eclectic Ambrosius, and now seven, uh, 1 with Sorarian. We're up to 12. Yes, the answer to the Equidon Prospector Menace. There you go. No reaping. Oh my goodness. This has the holy trifecta of weird Sarian um, artifacts, which some of them you don't really want to see. The holy trifecta. And so we just got Trojan Sauropod with a capture pip. Trojan Sauropod enters play under your opponent's control. Omni, game three, Emner. Your opponent reveals their hand and puts each creature from it into play, ready, then refills their hand as if it were their draw card step. Destroy Trojan Sauropod. Okay, so we've gained 13 Ember and we've gained our enemy three Ember. <laughs> oh man, this what a start. That's only the first five cards. We have wipe clear. Play deal one ember to each creature. Destroy each upgrade. Not again. Uh, we have another wipe clear. At least it's got an ember pip. Destroying upgrades left and right. This is a Voltron killer. I never realized that wipe clear is a Voltron killer. Interesting. Oh my goodness. Triple wipe clear. Wow. We have Magistra Vita. Play Reap. You may exalt a friendly non Sarian creature. If you do, Reap with it. You need to think outside the box. Okay, that'll get us some Ember on our creatures for uh, Brachinalia, potentially. This is a wild deck. Yeah, and Wipe Clear deals damage to your creatures, too. So, e. Oh, we have a double Magistra Vita. Okay. Or Magistra, sorry. We have Ostracize. Play. Lose one ember. If you do, purge a creature. Nothing that eight years in the hinterlands can't fix. We have a lot of weird creature control in this deck. We have another Ostracize. Oh my goodness. We gained too much ember too early. Now we're going to lose it all. Oh, and we have a Maverick Undagnathus in Star Alliance. That is not as awesome as I thought, but it still looks cool with the Star Alliance uh, border. What a hilarious, hilarious Maverick. <laughs> 13 Saurian cards. It is, the Saurian, I think, is like statistically easily the worst house in DT. Yeah, it does look pretty cool. Like the the blues from the uh, the sea, and the yellows go well, and the blues go well with the blue from the Star Alliance. It's pretty cool. Not the greatest card. All right, we have a selective preservation. Let's kill some more creatures. Play. Choose a creature of each power value. Destroy each creature not chosen. I told them to bring an arc. What's up, Fudgenator? We're opening a DT deck. Dinobot said it's the best in the world, but the Saurian has already let us down. Uh, but we did get a Maverick. I'm not sure if you got a Maver uh, You saw that. Yeah, Selective Preservation. That's a really good card. Uh, we have a Stunner, which is going to be destroyed by our Wipe Clear. This creature gains Fight Reap. You may stun a creature. Set Stunners to stun. Yep. Maverick Undagnathus. 
we have a universal translator, which will be destroyed by our three wipe clears. This creature gains fight reap, use a friendly non-star alliance creature. Version 207 notes now includes Darmachian, Aquin, and Swamp Bubble. Yeah, this is not a good pairing. We have an Operative Espeon. Elusive. After a creature raises a tide during their turn, they may use a creature they control. Aw, oh, yeah. 3-0 to start the NKFL season, Murph. Good job. Hey, we have the classic Rocketeer Triska. Oh, man, I need to fix my chat bubble. What, what, what? Why are you not up here? Okay. Yeah, Triska is always good. While the tide is high, Rocketeer Triska's neighbors interplay ready. We'll be together forever, glub glub. I don't think I have any cards to raise the tide yet, though. First 3 0 win in the NKFL. Nice job. Hey, double Rocketeer Triska. Now we're looking up. We have a Shield You Later. Shield you later may be played as an upgrade instead of a creature. With the text, this creature gets plus two armor. Better to have and not need. Oh, we have a Techno Babble. Play stun a creature and each of the neighbors that share a house with it. It's easy. Just recalibrate the pseudo pneumatic gyroflange, disentangle the quantum magnetic ambometer. Then, dot, dot, dot. Yeah, Techno Babble's great. And we have a double. Double Techno, double Babble. All right, we have a Unity or Discord. I love it. This can set up some fun stuff. And it's pretty good with the Triskas, although we don't have a lot to put down. We have the Espions and the Shield you later. Play, choose one, use a friendly non-Star Alliance creature, or return up to two friendly creatures and each upgrade attached to them with their own, to their owner's hands. And we do have those two upgrades, so maybe we can get some extra value there. Hey, double unit your Discord. I like it. This, uh, the Star Alliance is pretty good, actually. On to Unfathomable. And we're going to start with Lack Gaboon. Lack Gaboon gets plus one power for each other exhausted creature. If there are three or more other exhausted creatures, the Lack Gaboon gains Skirmish and Hazardous 5. This is the most eclectic deck. Um, starting with Eclectic Ambrosius. Uh, but the weird Sarian artifacts, the weird creatures, the, yeah. And. On to more artifacts. The Susurus. Action. Exhaust a friendly unfathomable creature. If you do, exhaust up to three creatures and or artifacts. I have used this before. It's it's not bad. Exhausting three of them can be powerful if you need, a, need to get to your creature control. All right. Abandoned ship. That is a banger. Play, return a creature to its owner's hand. If the tide is high, return four creatures to their owner's hands instead. Next up, Spark Fist. Skirmish, fight, stun and exhaust the creature Spark Fist fights. I would not say Ciceris is flat out good. And here's why. You're just responding. You're not gaining anything to win the game. If it actually gave you Ember or was doing something to help you win then it's good. It's a decent response to your opponent, but it's not helping you win the game. Yeah, I don't have any Tide Racers. Not yet. Next up, we have Wrath or Rune. Play, choose one. Destroy a flank creature, or return two enemy creatures to their owner hands. Pretty good. Uh, Would have been better with an Ember Pip. Then we have Flame Gill Enforcer. After your opponent raises a tide, enrage Flame Gill Enforcer. Action, capture three ember. It's gateway bad there. Um, it's no gateway. Exhausting three creatures for a turn is no gateway. While removing an ember that you could ahead. 
Next up is Guilt Spine Netcaster. Reap, exhaust a creature. Oh, we have a Maelstrom. Put each creature on top of its owner's deck in a random owner. Gain two chains. I honestly don't know what to call it. Dodger. We have a double Maelstrom. This actually has a lot of creature control. We have a Rakuzul's Chant. Play, exhaust a creature. If the tide is high, exhaust each creature instead. Well, sorry, we're not going to raise a tide. Tide goes in, tide goes out. Rakuzul will explain. The Chosen One. We have a double Rakuzul's Chant, and we still have no ways to raise a tide. We only have one card left. And it's Storm Surge. Your play, your opponent cannot ready cards during the ready card step of their next turn. What happens to an Aquan when it gets hit by lightning? Bop booked it. The same thing as everything else. No Tide Razor, and we actually have a lot of cards that want to use a Tide. Um, okay, I'm gonna let's count the pips. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten for the three ripe clears that are going to destroy all my upgrades. Eleven for Brachinalia if we play it, which we probably will. Twelve for Trojan Sauropod if we play it, which probably not. Thirteen for Serarium if we play it, which we probably will. I mean, we have a few low powered creatures but not the majority of them okay but here's i definitely agree that they should have had a minimum of tide raisers similar to kind of token makers but let's check out some of the craziness in this deck because we have some weird pairings of cards here that are just really funny and there's three Three of them that I'd like to highlight. And we definitely got to have fun watching that, looking at that Undagnathus in Star Alliance. Focus. There we go. The 13th Saurian card. Yeah, so we'll put that in that pile because that's pretty weird. Oh, here's that goes in that pile. That goes in that pile for sure. Oh, that goes in that pile. Okay. I think that's it. We have the totally wacky creature set with Black Gaboon, the Maverick Undagnathus, and Eclectic Ambrosius. Two, two really wacky rares. And then the Maverick. We have the Wacky Artifact Collection with the Ciceris, Trojan Sauropod, Brachinalia, and Serarium. And then we have, of course, and I could have included Shield You later here too, but we have the our upgrades and the three wipe clears to destroy them all. Beautiful, beautiful. What a deck. <laughs> uh, fun times. This is a weird deck, weird deck. You got that right. But I'm not sure if you knew, Fudgenator, this is Steve Jobs reincarnated. We have Jobs, the Alpha of Respiration. Jobs is back, and they're they're in the Crucible with a weird ass deck. <laughs> All right, so that was Crack a Pack. Um, we do have some fun stuff coming up. I'm actually I've been using Streamlabs to stream all this time, and I actually just started working on transitioning to OBS. And the reason why 
is I have some other stuff planned for the stream, which should be fun with some animations and stuff. And uh, there, there are some animations I have planned for my weekly stream here, but I definitely have some stuff planned for when I have matches. Um, and speaking of which, I will have an NKFL match sometime soon. I'm trying to schedule right now. And we haven't had a time yet that works for both of us. Uh, but NKFL match coming up hopefully this week. And then, yeah, every week thereafter. And I have some some cool stuff that I plan and planning for that. So um, I'm excited about that. I'm also working on something I can't talk about yet, which will be more regular content for y'all. Um, which is going to be exciting. And I still got more stuff I need to focus on for good old classic, the fun of Keyforge, Dataforge. Um, still haven't got to the, the models that I've created and have an episode about that. And I have a guest lined up for that. I just need to put that together. I started working on some Python scripts. Um, I need to work on that. So there's a lot of fun stuff coming. Uh, I, I just need to make sure I focus on piece by piece, get some of them out there, and uh, it can't happen all at once. But it's going to be fun. Got to gotta up my game on the stream in front. I downloaded and set it up DaVinci Resolve on a new laptop. Sweet edited videos from Murph coming soon. All right. Well, that's exciting. Um, okay, but 2023 is the year of Keyforge streaming. That's right. It is the best year for Keyforge streaming. Dinobot, Fudgenator, Zock, and, you know, all those other people. All right, that's the stream. Thanks, y'all, for hanging out. It was fun. Uh, have yourselves a wonderful day, a wonderful night, a wonderful whatever you are. And uh, we're out of here. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week. See ya.
Wait, yes, I want to spend... No, I can't. Okay. 